Hello everyone, welcome. In this session, I would like to teach you what algorithmic state machines are. Well, the first, firstly, I would like to start with a question. When you think about a flowchart, it is a sequence of operations. It is a sequence of operations which you're going to perform. It is that set of operations which will help you write a program. So, when you write a flowchart for a simple software program, you will have you're gonna have things like starting the operation then assigning and then performing the operations on that variable and then stopping the program so this is how you're gonna write a conventional flowchart for a C program or a, any programming language now what are algorithmic state machines ASM these are also flowchart sort of things but the only difference is that you don't consider timing in a flowchart but in an algorithmic state machine you consider the timing as well so now let us have a cleaner look at what the a algorithmic state machines are whenever you look at any device any program or any computer you will have you'll have to give data input and you have to give a control so you have both data and control so when you ask the computer to perform an operation you have to give the uh, data and you have to ask it to take some control what type of operation it has to perform this is for a simple operation but just imagine a huge operation huge num huge things like you have a lot of data, a lot of operations. Just imagine what the big computers do. So when you're actually designing a computer, you keep in mind all these aspects. So there are two things. There is a control part and a data part. So if you look at this diagram, you give external inputs to the control unit and that control gives that to the data unit. So in the data unit, you give data inputs and the data output comes out from the data unit. So now, from the data unit, the status is sent again to the control unit. So depending on this status or feedback information from the data unit, the control unit adjusts the control in the required manner so now we'll understand this better by looking at an actual ASM which is in the part 2 so now let us actually see what uh, the algorithmic state machine can consist of so as you've already seen before it has a state box a decision box I'll write them down for you these state boxes indicate nothing but the state of the clock at sequential circuit. So now these state boxes are represented by a rectangle and the state entry is from the top and the state code which is is written on the top right. On the top right is written the state code. whether it is 001 or 011 or whatever the state code is written on the top right so now the name of the state is written to the left say S is the name of the state it is written to the left this is the state name and finally the state exit and just in case any unconditional outputs are there you're gonna write them here you have to write this is the register the register operation or Z say Z is equal to 1 or something like that all that is written inside the box the state name is written to the left of it the exit is from the down and the input is from the top and the code of the state the state code is written to the top right of the box so now let us ne let us next see what a decision box is Now, let me ask you something. When you write a C program or a Java program, you have the rhombus-shaped box in which you have 
if x is greater than 1, yes and no, and then you switch things, well, the decision box in the ASM is similar to that. You have a rhombus here too. You have a rhombus, you have the entry from the top, and similarly you have branches, say 1 and 0, where 1 indicates true and 0 indicates false. So there are two parts here. This is exit part 1. and that is exit part 2. So this is how a decision box works. The input comes in and then the input condition. This is the input condition. So this input condition can be anything. Say the entry is about um, that you, ha you already have values of A and C and I have uh, A bar plus C is my logic that is my condition so if the value of a bar plus c is equal to 1 the condition says it is true and it uh, goes through the exit part 2 if a bar plus c is equal to 0 it switches to exit part 1 because it's false condition now this is how a decision box works now let us see how a conditional output box works now conditional output box is that box which is specific to the algorithmic state machine you don't really find this conditional output box in the normal so the conditional output box is specific to the ASM and you don't really find this in your uh, actual flowcharts for the programming languages. So the conditional box looks like this, which is a rectangle with rounded corners. I know I'm not a good artist, but you'll have to. Okay, let me do it like this. Um, Okay, okay, anyway, this is fine. So it is a rectangle with rounded corners, and you have entry from the, um, and and you have entry from the top and exit from the bottom. Now you can uh, list out the conditional outputs here. These are. the conditional outputs. So these outputs depend on the state of the system and the inputs indicated inside the box. So the conditional output box is the box which is specific to ASM. It has an input and an output and inside it it has conditional outputs. So these are the different things which you'll find in the uh, ASM chart. So now for example on an ASM chart that is on a weighing machine just look over for the part two so if you have found this informative thank you and hope you have a very great day